Hello everyone, Argzy here. This is quite exciting, our first foray into Farming Simulator 22. We're here, we are on Elm Creek. And I'm going to start off with a little let's play today. Uh, there's been plenty done over the past few days by some wonderful content creators showing you off some of the features of the maps, some of the features of the game. So I don't want to go down and double down on what they're doing, I want to do my own thing, do something a bit different. But by all means, if you're looking for something of that information, go and check it out. Farm some guy, Kadirk Farms, both two big uh, big friends of the channel who have done some fantastic stuff. We are here, we are under the shadow of the Elm Creek Water Tower. And again, trying to do something a little bit different, we are going to start off farming down here. Now, I have kicked this off in farm manager mode. So we're starting off with one and a half million dollars, but we don't own any land yet. We will soon though. We are going to buy this farm down here. Uh, it's got some nice open barns, some nice storage space already on it, which as I've looked around the map, some of the other uh, what you could call farm areas, farmyards, don't really have that. They've got more barns, kind of like this one over here, which the doors don't open on. A little bit disappointing. I think we've become spoiled in FS19 and the work the modders have done with uh, creating really usable functional yards. I do like the layout. Uh, obviously, it'd be great if we could get into these and use them. However, we can't. So uh, we can make use, though, of the barn we've got here. So let's take a look at the map, see where we are on the overall map and what we're going to buy. So yeah, you can see the overall picture, the starting farm right here in the middle, fields 45. 46 and is that 44 are the ones you start with right there. We are looking right down here in the very corner of the map. This is our farmyard that we're going to buy. It comes with three fields, 80, 81 and 82. If we just have a look here, you can see here are the three fields. So $244,000. Let's go ahead and buy that. Now I've also had a look at some of the other fields around here. We've got the option of 77, 78, and 79 for 225,000. Uh, we could spend 300,000 on these three fields. 429 there, we get a big grass area. But what I like the look of over here is field 72. Another $267,000 does come with one rather good sized field, uh, and it also has some grassland there. So we can look at possibly doing some grass work in the future. So let's go ahead and buy that. And we'll go and take a look at what is on our fields. There we go, you can see the train running through there as well. So, in our three fields here. So, this is field 82. We do have potatoes, uh, which is probably a challenging crop to start off with, particularly without any mods. But we'll see. It, it, they are very well grown, so whether we might lease some equipment and try and get those taken off just so we can clear the field and get something else put in there. Over here, we have sorghum which is uh, growing well and can't be too far away from it being ready to harvest. And then our third field over here, which is ready to harvest, is oats. So we will be able to get in there and get make a start on that very, very soon. Let's just take a run down the road here through the tracks. Now the other thing that appealed to me on all of these fields was the fact it is nice and flat and could be an opportunity to add some animal um, placeables down here, get some more farm experiences for FS22, just try out some of the new mechanics, see what some of the new features are. One of the reasons I didn't buy this land is it's got cotton in there, so it was a trade-off, cotton or potatoes, I decided we'd go with the one with the potatoes, uh, well we were kind of left with no choices, we wanted to get the buildings. Here we have our grassland uh, right here next to the train tracks, decent size area we could uh, use that for placeables as well or possibly even plow it and make it an extension of this field make it one large field but then over here this is the biggest field we now own is a wheat field which is also ready to harvest so i think there's nothing left for it we've got the land we've got some crops they're ready to go let us go shopping and get some equipment sorted out we've arrived down here at clever motors and we are going to go shopping. Obviously got just under a million dollars left. Uh, we need to buy obviously some tractors, trailers, uh, some harvesting equipment and the like. So let's take a look at what options there are and what we might get. Obviously the biggest ticket item will be our combine. Now if we take a look under harvesters, 
again getting used to not having mods and being restricted by what's available at different price points. I did want to try and avoid using the top liner because it's the starting combine that everyone else is using but as I scroll through some of the other options uh, be expending quite a significant amount of our income right at the start. So I think uh, for now let's start off with this I'd rather be able to afford an extra field and therefore get more income and be able to upgrade some equipment quicker than buy something more expensive and not have the land because the land is what's going to make us the money. We'll take a look in here we do have the setup options of wide or standard I think we'll go with wide we all like wide tyres and obviously one of the new features is license plates. Let's take a look here we can go in here and make it a nice bright orange and then what I've had a look at already a couple of hyphens and we can go a r g s y two more hyphens and there we have fs22 argzy on elm creek which i think is uh gonna look pretty good if we can spot it maybe we have to buy the combine before the uh plate will show up or maybe we've just customized a plate for a combine that doesn't have one i'd put it on none that was a uh, placement front and back there we go that was a bit of a faux pas on my behalf. Still learning. There we go. Argzy on the side there and around the back. Let's go ahead and buy that. $131,000. Now one of the other new features that I really like. If we go back in here we can look at combinations for this. And it shows us all the headers which are designed to work on this. We're going to need to pick up the green header here and also the header trailer. So we can just jump straight in here. No options on that buy that there and back for the trailer that's a good start right the other thing we're going to need today we're going to look at our tractor and we're also going to need a trailer or something to haul our crops down to the sell points uh, we obviously don't have a farm silo at the moment so we may have to look at the pricing and whether it's worth building a farm silo and storing our crops or whether we should be selling them to generate some income so let's just take a look here at trailers first because that might determine what tractor we buy. So one thing that there is a big selection of in the new game is trailers. Uh, if we just scroll through reasonably fast you can see as we grow in size there is a pretty good selection through there of trailers right up to your uh, super bees there on the end. We're not going to be looking at one of those though we are going to be looking at something a little bit smaller uh, something a bit more suited for the size of the farm we have for now and progressing from there. I've chosen, we're going to go for a Rudolph trailer, obviously not quite specific to the region but wanting to try out some of the other new equipment in the game. I think these two are both very similar in capacity and weight, this one has a little bit more space but I think the main difference is this has a side tip option. You can see there the uh, hydraulic arms on either side for a side tip. It does, with the grain door on the back there, still seem to have a rear tip so I'm quite liking the flexibility of that, I think. Just having a quick look it also has a rear hitch so we could look at buying another one in the future let's take a look here we can put an extension on that but i think we will just keep it standard for now extension might be uh pushing our limits a little bit we'll steer up We've got the trailer borg standard in standard two or michelin bkt verderstein and back to trailer borg so i think we might go with some michelins on this one and we'll go through and do our number plate as well all right, there we go. We've got that one purchased, and if we now go back and find a tractor to pull it. So after having a browse through here, we're going to start off in the small tractors. Actually, decided we might go with a red tractor first. Uh, I know there is only two case tractors in the game at the moment, so we thought we might show them some love and go with this to start off with. Again, obviously the starting tractor that a lot of people will be using is the John Deere 7800. Uh, so just to try and be a little bit different here I'm also going to look at putting a front loader attachment on it because uh, this could be a very versatile tractor if we do look to do some grass work and may need that for the load loading we will obviously bump the engine power right up there to the maximum 175 horsepower which isn't too bad for a small tractor in a farming simulator looking through at wheel setups uh, we might go with the wide tyres and weights there is options for narrow or rears but I think now for what we're using it for, just the wides and weights might be the best option. Again, we can go through and see what other options in the different manufacturers there are. 
And in fact, let's go with the Continental Wide Ties and Weights there. Again, another new brand. We'll just get the number plate applied and we'll be ready, I think, to ship these out. And there we are. There is our starting lineup of equipment to allow us to go and make a start on some of their harvesting. We've still got a nice $660,000 sitting there in the account. Uh, obviously, if we want to take on some other work uh, or do some other things on the farm, we're going to need some more money. So we're not going to jump straight into buying some more land. Uh, we are going to just keep what we've got there. But we'll just take a look now for the first time in third person. You can see our snazzy looking outfit there. Again, we've gone with a nice selection of orange and a big thanks to Mrs. Argsy Gaming who gave me some good advice on what I look like and how I should be as close as possible in the game. I don't think I'm quite at Kadirk Farm's level of realism or authenticity there. Uh, he did a fantastic job in getting his character looking very similar to himself. Well, let's get these all hooked up and we will take the opportunity to try out the AI workers for the first time and getting them to drive the tractor and trailer back down to the yard. So we're all hooked up to the trailer. Now if we just go into our menu underneath the map, the second icon down there is our active workers. We can then go in here, we've got our tractor selected. We want to create a job for it. Now the job here is just a simple go to and we want to set a target position. So if we come down here and set our target to somewhere out here in this field uh, or this area, I think if we go there and click our rotate, that should be in about the right position. We are going to make a start on the oats in field 81 first uh, before we tackle the big field over here, 72 with the wheat. So I think if we hit start, we should be able to hop out here and see these guys make a We'll start their journey down to the yard or to the farm. So, for my first experience here using the active workers or the AI workers, I'm going to ride along and see how this all goes and take a little bit of a tour of this part of Elm Creek. So we've made it down here, the work is just getting turned around to the angle I had specified for them. And there we go, they have completed their task. A little bit wobbly, uh, but from what I understand, that route should become a little bit simpler for them as they learn their way. Uh, and the AI workers will become more efficient at driving it. I am also interested, after going over the train tracks there, what would have happened if a train was coming? Is the AI worker smart enough to stop on a stop sign? We'll have to find out, see what happens with that at some stage. But here we are, uh, obviously we are going to get these oats harvested. We will have to think too about potentially getting a baler. Like I said, we were going to do some grass work, but we might be able to make some money off the straw. We'll have to have a look at the economies and see if it's worth it. Let's head back up to the store and pick up our uh, combine. Alright, there we are, we are all hooked up. Uh, it gave me great confidence to see that when we dropped the header on the trailer, not that I've shown you that, but it did give a little wobble, which to me would suggest that it is well locked onto that header trailer because that has always been one of the issues with this game is losing headers going around corners and we better get our beacons turned on there. Good to see those cars giving way as they should. But uh, let's get on our way down there. You can see the realistic beacon there glowing in the tree. I think is this our turn? Yes it is. We better go down here or we won't get to the farm. Or we'll have to go the long way. But uh, let's head down here through the town and get down and make a start on harvesting some oats. And here we are arriving down here at the farm. So we'll just put this in a place. There's probably a good location. Drop that trailer off there. I did just talk over the sounds but the uh, new sound engine is uh, very impressive. Some of the detail when doing different tasks. So we'll just pull up here to the header zoom in and try and get the best sound of it just listen to this when it hooks on it's nice to hear that little clunk some of the noises that the game makes when uh, you're doing different things 
So we're uh, getting straight in to harvesting our first crops here on Elm Creek. This is, uh, this is a pretty speedy start. So we'll get the combine there unfolded. We'll pull up here. And for the first time, we'll turn it on. We'll take a couple of headlands off, I think, on this end. Not really sure if it's worth it. This is a pretty tiny field. It's not going to take as long to cover it all. Let's get that turned on. It automatically lowers down. And we'll head in here and see how this all goes. I do want to make sure we've got our swath dropping on because uh, we do want to try and make some money off that straw. So there we go. I think we'll just back straight up instead of trying to turn around. I haven't lifted our header up. There we go. And we'll take another pass off this end without hitting our header trailer. And we should then be good to go on some up and downs. Alright, let's make a start on this side. Uh, I don't even think we're going to get close to filling the combine up at all. So we're not going to have to worry about getting the trailer or worrying about what side we're going to have the auger on. So, uh, I think without further ado, let us just put this on a little bit of a time lapse. We'll race through getting this field done and we'll, we'll probably leave us with more than enough time to go make a start over in the wheat. That did not take very long at all. Five passes, 2,652 litres, and we are all done. Well, let's head over and get this dumped into the trailer, I think, for uh, this exercise. We'll take this straight down to a sale point and uh, get it sold, because I don't think, since that auger folding out. Nice. Uh, but I don't think because of the volume we've got it is worth storing and keeping it anywhere on the farm. Let's just get this all emptied out into there. And I think what we might do, because we're going to go make a start on the wheat, let's take this down, we'll get the worker going in the wheat field, and we will, uh, thinking whether we're going to make it out this gate, yes we should with the header on, we'll go and find the best place to sell those oats. Here we are into the wheat field. Uh, we don't really need to take a headland off on this end, just looking at the clearances we have at this end. Plenty of space for the worker to turn around. What I'm not sure on is down the other end whether there's going to be enough space or not. So I think we might just uh, ride along as we go down the end and see how we go with turning around. So we'll just get pulled up here, it's turned on again. It has a drop down for us. Here comes the train. We go. Nice to see the train on the map as well. Obviously, very similar to the trains used elsewhere. Here, I think it goes through the cell point or the uh, delivery point. We could drop some crop off in there and it gets taken by the train to a cell point. We'll just run along the edge here. In fact, I might just hit the higher worker button, which we have now done, and see what happens when they get to the end. Here we are arriving, it does look like this field tapers just a little bit, so it'll be interesting just to take a wee look here to see how the worker's going to handle turning around here. Obviously we don't have the option of course play or auto drive or any of those mods we've been so used to using in FS19, so we're just going to have to see how the worker handles turning around here. I think looking at it so far with them driving on the crop, it may be worth our time to take a headland off. Although, once I've got this little piece done, it might not actually be worth it either though. I haven't quite backed up to get there, so a few little things there which are still some of the same bugbears that we had with FS19. Still room for improvement with the workers. But overall, uh, the being able to drive and having that AI worker drive between point to point or doing deliveries or some of the other options that are available with those workers is... Uh, certainly a big step up. So we will leave this guy going here for now and we will head over to the tractor we will grab that and find out where the best place to sell the oats are. Alright so we've made it over here into the tractor let's just take a look at the new economies menu and figure out where we are going to head.
There's a big difference you can obviously see here straight away is it has each of the products that we have listed here. And we can now go in, we'll find oats, click on oats there, and we'll take a look and see where our best price is. Far and away is Goldcrest Valley. Now, if we double click on there, we should be able to see where we go. Uh, we've tagged place. Here we go, probably double clicked on it and didn't. Now, it does have an option there to show pricing fluctuations. Let's take a look there. This shows us across the seasons how pricing varies for this crop. We can see there when the best time to sell each item is. Grapes, for example, May to June is the peak, whereas oats, where we are, we are actually down in the uh, down in the doldrums actually on price. We should be waiting until January. But uh, for the purpose of the exercise, we do want to go and get something sold. So we'll find where Goldcrest Valley is, and head over there. Let's have a look on the map and see if we can see it flashing somewhere. Ah, and Goldcrest Valley is actually one of the train sell points. So I think we can go and dump it up here into the grain pool for the train and possibly, although there's Goldcrest Valley as well. We'll go and figure this one out. I think we can dump this for the trains and tell it which one to go and sell out. So I think we'll try just dumping in here. We'll head in and see what our options are. We do get a trigger there to dump with. So we'll just have a look what we need to do here with the train. See where that has dumped and has not sold. So let's go and see if we can uh, hijack the train as it runs past. We probably just missed the chance to take some of our product down to Goldcrest Valley. In fact, it's stopped. Let's go and see if we can jump in here. Tell it what we want it to do. We've just backed the train up a little bit there. We've come in underneath the fill point here. We had to open the top of the carriage you can see there the open and closing animation we just pop up there we can see we've now at grain pool east which is where we dumped so we can load this up with oats we can start filling there now i'm not sure what our next step is whether we just drive this off and it will head to goldcrest valley or what we need to do let's go and see there we go the train will now drive to goldcrest valley and will return on the other side of the map do you want the train to sell the loaded goods Yes, we do. There we go. We have earned $3,227 for harvest income from that. So uh, that was a nice experience, actually. It was a good thing to try out. I know it was something that they in integrated into Erlingrat with the uh, Alpine DLC last year, the FS19, uh, but not something I had the experience of using. So that was nice to try. Right, we'll go over and find our tractor. Check there's no cars coming and go and get the combine emptied out because we did just get a warning to say it was at 80% capacity. So fortunately we are catching up here with the combine with it on the right side of the field or at least the auger on the right side. We'll just get it turned around here and right beside it and we should be able to unload on the go on the move. Right there we go, we are getting the wheat here in to the trailer. They're making pretty good progress actually on this. Uh, we've got probably almost half the field done. Kind of having played on some big maps with some big fields, I kind of forgot what it was like to work on some of these smaller pieces of ground. But it's nice, it's nice to return back to the game routes and try out some of this different equipment. Uh, one thing with this series, it's just going to run its natural course. I've got no plans, no goals, no objectives. I do just want to try out some of the new features, some of the new equipment, uh, get into some of the production chains, trying those out as well. So that may be even something we consider with this wheat, is whether we actually invest in the grain mill and take that down there, or whether we uh, keep it for selling just at the sell point. Or whether we split it in half, see what income we get off 4,000 litres or so of wheat from one point and 4,000 litres from the other point and see if it's actually worth the effort. But I think we'll just uh, carry on with the harvest here. I'll see if I can get a few creative little shots and put together a little bit of a montage before it's all finished and uh, we'll see you when it's done.
just getting the combine emptied here with only a very very small part of the field left but I don't think we're going to get all the wheat here in the trailer no there we are we are full so we're going to have to decide what we're going to do with this for now I think we might just head back up to the farm and park it up in the shed and we'll investigate getting a silo maybe built on the farm perhaps now that we've got some spare space with that oat field harvested we could use some of that up or we could look to see if there's some other space we could build something on but we'll just head back up and if we park it in the shed for now it would be nice and dry and relatively safe see if there's any vermin or anything around they're probably going to find their way into it and the birds might have a bit of a feast but at least it won't get wet if it rains so uh we'll get this done then we'll get back over to get the combine finished off all right a bit of a tight squeeze there through the entry but we are in there we go it's like we need to get the uh camera detection collision detection mod installed just to avoid those uh moments like that where uh, as we pan around the camera zooms in i'm sure giants won't be far away from that getting that sorted right let's uh head on back over to the combine and uh, get them finished off over there and we've got over here just in time to see this last little piece of the field be completed we will run along the edge there and pick up all of those last little bits but uh the worker has completed their task so we will take over and get this done ourselves i am going to actually just try i think i've just turned off the swath dropping so we'll just see what it's like when this spreads the swath instead of dropping it there we go slightly different animation nice to see there it's a different texture on to the field we'll just race along pick up these last few bits of the field bits of wheat that the worker didn't quite pick up like i said still not quite a perfect system but it does seem to be a pretty good improvement over farm sim 19 all right there we are we have got everything done now so we've still got 6060 liters sitting here in the combine 18 and a half thousand liters over in the trailer so not a bad little haul off that field it's over 24,000 liters all up i did have a quick look the wheat price was certainly not as generous as the price for the oats was uh, but i'm sure that uh, there will be some improvement with that over time which is why i'm considering putting this into a silo or like I said before considering comparing it to or putting some through a grain mill and turning it into some flour and see what the return on our investment is there as a comparison so we'll just uh, zoom right in here again and listen to this clunk as we disconnect very satisfying sound and then you would have just caught a glimpse there of the header moving ever so slightly on the trailer which uh is obviously evidence like i said before that it is locked into place and not going to be going anywhere which is good could could not remember the number of times in fs22 i lost a header uh, fs19 sorry that i lost a header on the side of a road or something like that just looking here we are not going to be getting this in to the shed anytime soon so we might just have to leave it here and uh figure out what we're going to do with the rest of this wheat and i think that is a very good point to wrap up our first episode here in farming simulator 22 on the new elm creek map in the midwest of america next time i may look at buying a baler getting this straw baled up getting it picked up and sold and even starting on some tillage maybe some work in the fields to get these ready to plant for next time certainly will be for the big field uh not sure about this one this could be a good one to put a grain silo in to use for maybe a small cow pasture maybe some hens who knows we'll have to uh have to come up with some ideas there of what we are going to do but uh i've really enjoyed that this uh really is looking to be a very promising game and uh have thoroughly enjoyed all the content that was produced over the weekend to everyone who had early access you all did a fantastic job of showing off the game uh, and have made a lot of people very excited about it and excited to have their hands on it as i do so from me thank you all very much for watching i really do hope you have enjoyed that and i will catch you in the next one